We, we good. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. How y'all doing? Y'all know who this is? This your boy Rod Thomas Jr. And this is the real news behind the news. Uh, yeah, the day is Monday. Hot in the mug out here. August 24, 2020. But we in the comfort of our own home. And guess who we got in the house, y'all? Hey, Cooper Rose, stand up. Y'all know who this gentleman here is. Both of these gentlemen. Hey, y'all want to introduce yourself real quick? Uh, Terrence Wynn, a.k.a. T. Wynn. Everybody know T. Wynn. What? Roderick Allen. Roderick Allen. Everybody know you too. Big but, Rope. Big Rope. Hey, man. I, I'm glad that y'all reached out to me, man. Again, I'm humbled, and it makes me feel honored, man, that, you know, man, you just coming home, man, after doing what, 30, almost 30? 30? 30, 30 years and seven months. 30 years and seven months flat in Angola State Penitentiary, and you still got a smile on your face, man. Right now, you don't look like you bitter or nothing, hey, man. Congratulations. Welcome home, Ken Folk. But again, y'all, we're here with Taryn Wynn. And um, we're going to just get right off into it because this young little brother, we ain't both of us, all of us old in here. I, when I say young gentlemen, but you still looking good, man. You know, you look vibrant. It's like you came out better, not bitter, man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'll praise it to the creator. Hey, but let's get right off into it. Um, let's talk about why we're doing this video because now that you're home, man, through our life experiences, we can share knowledge, wisdom, and understanding with other people. Now that you've done this time again, 30 years flat, man, you back home, and you are on a whole different level, man. Tell the people about your, your desire uh, to work in the community and what it is that you want to do in the community. All right. Uh, I went to prison at the age of 16. At the age of 16, I was, uh, I was wrecking havoc in, in the black community, my community, and other communities. You know, at the time, I thought that that was a good thing to do. I thought that uh, the scrum in our community was, was beautiful because I was so ignorant. So I went to prison at the age of 16. I was trials and out there. Went to prison and I, I, I received a life sentence. I went to Angola and I was going to school before I went to prison. But in, in prison, education becomes so vital and such a, a pivotal thing for you to, if you want to, grow. So I educated myself. I constantly educated myself. And through the education, my eyes opened to seeing that, man, being a terror in your own community is really stupid. So I, I ended my stupidity. I ended my ignorance with this education. And so I, I came back home to bring this education to kids so that they can see that having a scared mother is the worst thing in the world. Having a scared sibling or a little kid to have him fear another guy that's running through your community with a gun because you know he'll kill you or whatever, that's, that's some real sad stuff. Yeah. That's not the way to be. Because yeah. we can speak about how the white people treat us, but we treat one another worse than they, than they, than they treat us. Because now they understand that I don't have to treat y'all bad. Yeah. Y'all treat each other bad. So I can sit back and laugh at you. But the psychology of what's, what's happened has, has pa been passed down to us. And we got to kind of like realize that and understand it. People kind of like forget the past when they see what's going on presently. But yeah. the past is so tied to what we're doing because the fear that they instilled in us is still, is still alive today. So we'll fear them, yet we won't fear one another. We'll hate one another. And we shouldn't hate one another because white don't hate white. Mexican yeah. don't hate Mexican. Yeah. Each yeah. race commits crimes against one another. Mm. That happens. It's, it's, it's going to happen. It always happens. Yet, we got to stop seeing hate when we see one another and start seeing love. Because if I hate you, I can never help you. Yeah. So I can't say that your black life matter if I don't love you. I can't say that your black life matter if I don't care for these little kids that's coming up. And I don't teach them the right way. If I don't teach them how to have unity. If I don't teach them how to have an open heart and open arms to protect that little girl so she don't never get raped, to protect her so she don't have to go on welfare, to protect her so that she don't have to be single, raising a kid, raising a family, because there should be no single parents in our in our community. Yeah. yeah, women and men will have differences, yet we shouldn't leave our kids behind. and We shouldn't leave our women to fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. So my education... And my community activism is about 
teaching these kids a new way of thinking so they don't come up thinking that it's cool to kill the next black man or he don't have to see the next black man as a threat because the next black man shouldn't be a threat to the next black man. It should be about love. Yeah. Well, you just said some key, uh, some real deep stuff because like you say, man, there's a uh, saying that goes, anybody that forgets their history is bound to repeat it. And again, like I mentioned earlier, man, you could have came out of there 30 years, bro, flat in, in the Louisiana State Penal System. Angola, Louisiana, one of the most, uh, probably one of the most toughest prisons. You came out better, man. I, I mean, just looking at you, you don't see no bitterness in your heart. And only the creator could have done that, man. And you, another thing you clicked on, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But again, I see that your, your, your desire is for the children, bro. You know, I noticed you got a lot of things. Hey, you want, hey, hey, Ro, you want to hold some of the uh, merchandise up that you got? You got a lot of stuff coming. You hit the ground and started running, bro. You came home, touched down, man, and went at it. You got a clothing line. And again, in, 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 yo, you say it's street educated. Go ahead. Let's see what else you use. I mean, you got different, um, or is it just one? No. Or is it just different styles? But um, again, do you believe, T. Wynn, you believe that you don't have to be a child's daddy to be a father figure in that child's life, bro. Man, um, we come from Africa. And in Africa, they have a, uh, it's an African proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. When I was coming up on the Cooper Road, me and Roger come up down the street from each other. Roger's mama had permission to whoop me. My mama well, didn't have to tell her, hey, mm -hmm. if you see him do something, whoop his butt. She knew that she could whoop me, bring me home to my mom and tell her, look, this is what he did. I whooped his butt and my mom was going to be hugging us and saying thank you. Because it was about that, the couple were raising me to be a, a productive person. And it went on with every kid. If you was from the cook Road, every household had a, felt that they had a responsibility to teach you the right path to take. So no kid was going to be hungry. No kid was going to be alone. We was taught to help raise everyone. Mm. So I don't feel like a kid should be fatherless or motherless. Things have happened within our, within our community, within our race, that has destroyed our families. And it's a real sad thing to see. I mean, I, 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 I don't return home. I see more homeless people on these interstates and at every... Uh, heavy traffic area than, than I have ever seen. I never thought that that would happen. And, and you know, I feel some kind of way about that because I feel like no person should be homeless. I mean, this this government killed Gaddafi. Gaddafi was a, was a president or a dictator, however you say, of Libya. And in Libya, he never depended on no other country. And this was a country that most people would, want, would have wanted to be poor. But no one was poor in Libya. There was no poverty in Libya when Gaddafi lived. Now how can we be in the greatest country in the world when we have such a high poverty rate? How can we be in a country where our government tells our women, if you let a man stay with you, you can't receive government assistance? So that's telling me that our government is actually against us. They pimping, basically. You know it's yes. like they pimping. You making this this divide come between between the black man and the, and the uh, black woman, but we don't see those things when we see it. What, what people see when they see us is lazy people, not lazy people. I, I don't see us being lazy people. So now that that slogan has trans transferred over into having us going at it with these Mexicans for these little bit of jobs. Mm -hmm. It's not right, you know what I'm saying? And we got to realize. And come to the conclusion that, hey man, we must come together. Yeah. And we must stop letting these people divide us. And we got to stop dividing ourselves, man. Yeah. It's actually got to be the truth to the matter is, your life matter to me. His life matter to me. He black. Your life matter. And, it, and by me saying that, I have to show you that. We have so much hatred towards one another, man. It hurts to see. Mm -hmm. It hurts to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, so... My thing is not to let that continue to be. And then and through all this poverty, um, miseducation of our children, the lack of fathers in the home, because I'm a firm believer, no disrespect to women, 
But a woman cannot really raise a boy to be a man. You know, there's certain things that a father, I mean, come on, as a kid, when you potty training your son, a woman can't show him how to go in there and pull it loose, you know, out and stand up. He goes in there with his dad. You see, it's certain things that a man, let me ask you a question, because um, like I say, we're going to get ready to go into another question, but this here uh, touches on something you said. After 30 years, man, again, flat, I've seen this just in the 10, you know, off and on 10 years that I've done. These cats are getting younger and younger that's coming to the penitentiary, man, and they're getting more violent and violent. It's like they don't have no emotions or no soul. I mean, can you talk a little bit about that, man? You know, because we, we need to share this with other people so they'll have an understanding what this prison system actually does, even your school system, how it leads some of our kids to the prison system. Yeah. Um, I think it has a lot to do with these the so-called OGs don't talk to the to they don't speak to the kids no more. I mean, they don't tell them what's right and what's wrong. You don't. They don't teach them how to think their way through situations. As a kid, yeah. we let our anger lead us, and our anger leads us down destructive paths because our anger doesn't give us a chance to take to step outside ourselves to think. Yeah. To think of a positive resolution. So we respond on emotions, emotions. and instincts it's as opposed emotion. to thinking things through. So that's what you'll see a kid doing. Purely on emotion. So that means he's becoming emotionless because mm -hmm. he don't care. And it's always he has he has his defenses up. It's always about violence. It's never about look man, you did that bro. I'm going to let you go. I want to do this to you, but I'm going to let you go, man. I, I, I want you to apologize to me, and we're going to walk away like, man, it's not that. You do me something, I'm just going to act on you. Mm -hmm. Because this is what I'm trained. This is what I see. It's like they walking around in real life, but they like in a game of Grand Theft Auto. These kids actually think this shit, I mean, this, this stuff, we're going we gonna to keep the cussing down on it. But they actually think that this is a, a, a game of Grand Theft Auto where, again, they act on, on instinct. Yeah. So that's bad when your instincts is to act in a violent way without thinking through it. And again, like you say, go back to these OGs because a lot of us, us older cats, man, um, you know, that they, they call us, you got a lot of people 50 years old, man, still game banging. Yes. You know, and they, they make a kid, the youngster, bro, think that it's cool to go to prison, man. Whereas, again, you get more accolades from going to jail, man, than you do going to, to going to college. Yeah. But most most importantly, though, man, you are doing a documentary. How, wait a minute, you also wrote what? I wrote twenty books. Twenty. I came home with twenty. Twenty books. Yes. Uh, tell us a couple of books. What What are your favorite ones? And what, what What's the subject matter of them? I think um, I got one that's going to come out within within a month. It's called In No Sense. Um, it's It's a play on innocence. And it's, it's 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 a book I made I made parole June me June eighteenth. I wrote this book from from June the twentieth, and I, I was released July the first. So I haven't even much been home three two months yet. So I wrote this book, and this book is about my life, and I wrote it fast because it's telling kids, look, we lose our innocence in the in the most senseless ways. When we shouldn't. I mean, we should be kids. We should remain kids while we're kids. Because you don't see white kids having to face that system like we face it. I mean, we don't see the injustice, the the, the system, or uh, systematic racism that goes on. They don't see that. We do. We might, we so immune to it that we don't see it. So, in no sense, speaks about me going through the rattle house which is a group home here in Shreveport. And uh, the Rattle House is really, at the time I went to it, the Rattle House was really geared to make sure I don't come back to prison. I mean, I don't come back to jail, period. It was a really, really, really beautiful program that I should have never went to anyway because I had people in the community that was trying to steal me right, but I, I chose my own path and my path was wrong. And it led me to the Rattle House and from the Rattle House it led me to prison. So this book speaks about pre preventative ways to stop that, to stop that kid that's going down the wrong path from continuously going down that wrong path. Because you can stop him. But it takes a person 
that he can identify with the stopper. Yeah. A yeah. person in a business suit probably wouldn't stop a kid from doing it because he couldn't stop me because I had saggy pants on and I had a bandana on and I had a chain around my brain so I couldn't think my way to saying that that business suit is really what I want to wear. It wasn't you, like Because on the other hand, you want to wear the prison suit. Yeah. Instead oh, of, yeah, yeah, yeah you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you had to have, you had to, to talk to me, you had to be dressed in some saggy pants or you had to be coming out of a prison suit for me to understand you and talk to you, for you to tell me something and for me to listen because it's an identifiable struggle. Mm -hmm. Yet, kids today, the older brothers today, it's fixed in their mind that these kids ain't gonna listen to me. So they kind of scared of the kids. He ain't gonna listen. He a hard headed. Let him go and get killed. Or let him go and go to prison. I just did 30 years and seven months. I don't want a kid to go to prison. I don't want to see uh, all these black mothers crying because they're losing their kids. So there's two families that's, that's, that's dying and suffering through that. Because when you're doing time, your family love you, they're doing it with you. Yeah. And the other family, they got to go to the cemetery to see their loved one. So this book, in no sense, speaks about that. It speaks about how it takes, in no sense, does it take for me to kill you. Yeah. But in every sense, must I use not to kill you. Yeah. We got five senses. We got to use them. We use them when we're hungry. We use them for, you know... When we need to hear something, we use it to see. Now you got to use it to think. And you got to think how not to commit a crime against another person. So you don't have to go down that road. Or so you don't have to be laying up on the roses. So that's that's what this book is about. And I have, you know, I, my other books is about life experiences. You know, I'm from Shreveport. So I represent Shreveport because no one else does. Yeah. Uh, I'm from the Cook Road. I love the Cook Road. I represent the Cook Road because outside of Tredavious White, who's who plays for the Buffalo Bills, we don't really have nobody in the with the with the spotlight on us to show about our community. Yeah. So my books celebrates the life here in Shreveport. Celebrates the life in Louisiana because I speak about other cities in Louisiana, but it celebrates it in a stance from Love. That's what every book I buy is really a romance novel. But it, 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 it gives you regular life in these streets. Because these streets are what I know. These streets raised me. You know what I'm saying? Outside of my family, I was in these streets knee deep. So I speak about that. I speak about the toxic attitudes that we have when you're raised by these streets. So yeah. that's, that's what my book scares me. <coughs> in no sense, it's the most positive book. I like that play up on words that you in no sense should a child really be going to the penitentiary if we all come together as a community. Yes. And really so hey, I like that play up on words. You yes. also got uh we just see a couple of items in your clothing line. Well you got a record label coming up. What what type of music are you gonna be uh I'll tell you the truth, what kind of it ain't gonna be well seven niggas gotta get shot no. and before nine AM and sell twelve pounds of dope no. and before two o'clock. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't promote that uh, negativity. I mean, I don't see a, the next black man as an end because yeah. I think we're kings. I think we're princes. I think we're great human beings because everybody ain't a king. You no, know, that's a system. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't a prince. It's a system. Yet we come from that lineage. So I see you as a brother, and I see you, you know, as someone I, I love. So I'm not speaking, I'm not promoting that. I'm not promoting calling a woman a, a, a degrade name. It's about, the name of the label is For The Struggle. And I'm For The Struggle to uplift my people. The name of the clothing line is Street Educated. And it's not promoting anything negative. It's to say that, man, to be educated is the most beautiful thing in the world. Because an educated person makes changes. A negative person makes no changes. Mm -hmm. When you run around killing people and stuff, you ain't making nothing but small changes. It's not a change you really making. It's just fear. But an educated person can make that person with a gun bow down. Yeah. Because you're going to abide by these laws that I'm going to write. And it takes an educated person to write laws. So my, the, the name of Street Educated says that I understand what's going on from the, in these streets. 
I might live these streets, but I'm educated. And my me being street educated is to promote the positivity that must go on to make everything thrive and to make everybody come together collectively. So that's what street educated actually is, to show the greatness of education. I, I, you know what, and I'm going uh, to kind of piggyback on that, Richard, because I've been blessed, man, to attend quite a couple universities. I you know got several accreditations. But I'm going to be real. It's, that stuff that I learned in the streets actually is just as valuable as that, that stuff that I learned in those classrooms, man. But, you know, education is something that go by the wayside. But that's why I like what Tredavious does, man. He has an emphasis always. You know, every time he comes here, I'll be blessed because he give me an interview. And we always talk about um, uh, point of view. Everything we talk about is going to always be geared toward the children. And that's what really, man, makes me proud of you because you, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, all about educating, becoming that village that educates all our children, man. You know, and that's that's a deep thing. And something else, oh, a documentary also. You got a documentary coming up too. Tell me about that. Tell us about that. Uh, my documentary is about me doing 30 years in prison and coming out and just showing you who I am as a person, who I am, and it, it, it speaks about, you know, I'm, I'm a person that was blessed to have a really, really great family. So I come home. And I come home to a Porsche. I come home to a Beamer. It's not about that. It's about the fact that my family loved me enough to continue to love me while I was in prison during 30 years. So the documentary really, it, it, it tackles and it shows that love and it shows the love that I have for my community. I mean, it, it, it shows that, man, since I've been home in these months, what, 24 days? Two black guys got killed by two white people. Well, let me correct myself. One of these black guys was killed by two police officers. One was a 65-year-old man killed by a 23-year-old white guy behind a watermelon that the white guy sold to the 65-year-old the, the black man, and it was rotten. And he brought it back to him, and this white guy blew his head off. And this, the black guy that was killed by the police officers had nothing in his hand and they shot him 16 times and he had a mental problem. My documentary shows that. It shows that when I went to prison, two white people had killed two black people. One of those white people, white female, killed the black guy in Cedar Grove and it caused a riot in our city mm -hmm. because our city had got tired of people killing us the way that they was killing us. And I, my crime was committed right after that. These people went and got single digit numbers for killing a black person. I got life for killing a black person. And everybody was kind of happy with that. But no one was saddened by the fact that the white people can do it and can keep getting away with it. You know, it makes you think about, think back to when Emmett Till was killed and nobody was convicted of it. It's like the same slap on the wrist. So my documentary is to show all of that, show the injustices that goes on with us. And it's to show that, man, love wins, man. It wins in the end. And, you know, I came from prison and I'm, I'm still doing it. I'm still, like you say, I'm better. I ain't bitter about it, by the experience. Because I want my experience in prison to stop another kid from going to prison. Because, man, prison is a lonely place. Man, I lost both of my parents while I was in prison. I lost aunts. I lost my sister. I lost a lot of cousins. I lost all of my grandparents while I was in prison. I mean, I did more years than Mandela did. And Mandela returned and became a president. Mm -hmm. I'm just returning to, to do whatever I can do. You know? So my documentary speaks on all that. It speaks on those long 30 years and how the brothers in prison, man, I still carry them. Because I left some brothers there that I really, really love, man. That I love like brothers. And I want to help them come home. Because some of them don't deserve to be there. And, and, and some of those guys have become so much better that they can come home and you know, contribute to the upliftment of these communities, man. Some of these guys can come home and stop what's going on in these streets. Stop yeah. these young guys from killing each other. You know what I'm saying? We live in... 
we living more harder than they're living in these third world countries. Because, you know, people have no remorse for life right now. So, my documentary talks about that. And it speaks on guys getting out of prison. That there's a need for guys to get out of prison. There's a need for people to, uh, to be forgiven. Because we all want to be forgiven when we do something. But yet, when a person gets convicted, we don't want to forgive. So, that's what I... That's yeah, what and that, that's the crazy part about it because... When you, when you come home, sometimes you, you stigmatize. And I'm going to be real, one of the biggest uh, letdowns to me was the Christian, the, uh, the religious community. Because y'all talk about all this forgiveness on Sunday, but then when I come apply for a job at your business on Monday, because I got this felony, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, you just said something else, though, man, that I really want to talk about before we end this video, man. Um, again, we mentioned it earlier. Um, how you got a lot of so-called OGs that's um, making, actually I believe that OGs are the ones, so-called OGs are the ones that's facilitating a lot of this stuff that's going on in the neighborhoods, man. Because if we had real people that, uh, that got, educated, got college degrees, actually stayed in the hood, we would have more examples of how you can um, overcome. But now all we got is Negroes coming back from the penitentiary and making it look like it's a party down there. You know, they got it, I mean, now, I'm going to just be real. They got it whereas you got brothers running around here with automatic weapons, shooting indiscriminately, killing innocent babies. Do y'all realize, man, we even had seven babies in just the last three years to get killed. And guess what? Like the white folks you were talking, them Negroes who killed them babies ain't even went to prison. Because we hide a lot of stuff out in our neighborhood. Would you agree with me when I say like this? This is my definition of snitching. Say us three go out and do something. We pull a caper. I get caught. Well, they say we really won't be real. You know what I'm saying? Tell her what you know. And I go to telling everything in alphabetical order so I can get out my time. You know, that's snitching. Because you can't snitch on somebody unless you're involved in what? Criminal activities. But when you got grown men co-signing and hiding young boys out that's running around here shooting AK-47 and killing innocent babies, man. What's, what's your take on the, the, the state of black men raising our boys, man? Because in my opinion, bro, we, they say this is a lost generation. Well, who lost them? Who lost them? And who going to help us go find them? So we're going to end this video with your take on that, man, especially based on how you seeing these youngsters coming in to the penitentiary. And now that you're out and you see, uh, excuse my language, the fuckery, that a lot of us as so-called OGs are perpetrating. Yeah, um, it's a sad thing. I mean, I'm smiling, man, but you know, I cry inside because you seeing a kid get killed. Kid ain't did you nothing wrong. The kid deserve to live. I mean, not to say that the next man that you kill doesn't deserve to live. So you know, to see a black man not try to stop a black man from killing a black man. Which, how, how, however old that, that, that kid is that's killing. Man, that's, that's a sad, that's a really, really sad man. It's really not a man at all, man. Yeah. Because yeah. a man, a man got to do, they say a man's responsibility. And as a man, I'm responsible for every life on the Cook Road. That's just a small segment of it. I'm responsible for every black life in the in the city of Shreveport. I'm responsible for every black life in the state of in the state of Louisiana. I'm responsible for every black life in in the world. And when I do it from a black stance, I'm responsible for every white life, every Mexican, every Chinese, because I'm a man. And God put me here for that reason. I got to nurture. I gotta do I gotta do everything as a leader. Because that's what God put me here for. So when I lead you wrong what, that, what does that make me? How we feel about Donald Trump being the president of our country? If we don't feel sad about Donald Trump being the president of our country, something wrong with you as a person. I don't care if you're Democratic or Republican. You see Donald Trump isn't fit to be a, good, a great president. He, he would never go down in history as that. So we see that he isn't a good president. He leading us wrong. He led us wrong in this coronavirus. Look at how many people dying from it. It started off as black people dying from them, black kids dying from them. So he a bad leader. So now I come in my community and I see a guy that I supposed to respect 
and he telling this, this kid, I'm going kill him. Or he letting this kid do it, and he know he got a voice. He wrong, man. Oh, they buying the dope, putting it into the hands of these kids. Cause I, I'm going to just keep it real. I ain't, it ain't like I'm giving up the game, but everybody know how the game is. You got a lot of OGs, so-called OGs, that put the dope in these kids' hands. Because they already got two or three felons, and you know that this little 13 year old ain't gonna do nothing but juvenile life, but you not already scarred him by just him getting arrested. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I had to interject that in there, man. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's, a sad, it's a sad cycle, man. It's a cycle that we gotta kinda like come out of. Because, like you said, why would you use a kid to do your dirty work, man? Yeah. What kind of man are you? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like we done became. Real, real animals. We're lower than the lion. Mm. The lion used the lioness to go out and get the food. Yeah. Just sit back pimping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand we got we got the knowledge of life through through nature. The birds and the bees. You know what I'm saying? We actually studied the birds and the bees to to build colonies. The ants and everything. You know, we learned from that. But yet and still now we didn't uh we didn't went below them. When we let our kids go out and be these villains and we get them the guns, we get them the drugs. Like you say, man, I ain't gonna give up the game. I can't give up the game, man, but I wanna save lives too. Yeah. So I wanna save lives. I don't want those kids to be having to sell drugs. I don't want you to idolize the dude that's sitting on 26 and he got it through selling drugs. I want you to idolize the the, the guys that's wearing these suits going down town and they keeping their cars original. You know what I'm saying? Let me interrupt because something you just said. You out a lot. Guess what? You catch that riding around on the 30s and they're flashing all this money and the gold. You got these little boys now looking at you. They going to come take your shit now, nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So you're really, you're really contributing to the problem in numerous ways. I just had to interject that, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Hey, man, that's the truth. You know, that's a that's the truth. They hungry yep. and you flash it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so if I see you got a table full of food and there's a sixteen year old, my mama is, is you know, strung out on drugs, alcohol, whatever, she blowing money, whatever, I'm finna come and get it. And that's what we see in a lot of these these shootings around here, man, is behind this dope game and again, you got a lot of adult men pushing that shit. But go ahead, bro. Yeah, man, you know it. As a man, as a father, as a grandfather. I, I know I owe it to my grandkids for me to walk right and for me to tell them the right thing to do. I'm not going to tell my grandkid, man, look, here go a gun. Go on, go kill him. Go on, go kill him. He hit you, go kill him. I'm not going to tell my grandkid that. And I'm not going to let my grandkids bring his friends around me dressing all yeah. crazy, talking all crazy, and for me to continue the trend of teaching them bad habits. I'm gonna teach you positivity, man, and I'm a, because I owe it to you for you to live. Yeah. We have a right to live, man, and we have a right not to let our women continue to live in fear, or not to continue to bury us because so many fathers out there, a mother have to bury you and everything. We got to come together on that. We got to be men, and you know, being a man, like I said, is being responsible, man. You got to be a leader. You got to lead right. It's, it's it's a right and a wrong way to lead. Just because you a leader, you lead these kids down these paths of self destruction, then you ain't right. You ain't right about that. Yeah. We all live our lives. And I'm, you know, people say that you that you ain't got no right. To, you can't judge a person. That's a lie. When you read the Bible, you understand what the Bible's saying. God said you can judge a person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you get a crime, you catch a crime, you go to you go to jail. You're going to a judge, and he's judging you. He's judging you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to a jury, and that jury is judging you. So, man, in life, we got to make the right decision, and we got to be better examples for these kids. So I'm not in agreement with a man keeping uh, keeping this genocide going on, man. Yeah. We got to come out of this genocidal state so we can raise our kids to be loving, so we can raise our kids to raise the property value, so we raise our kids to be owners. Yeah. Man, That's the key. Ownership. We, we have Leave something for your children, yeah. man. I mean, Lee, come on. Hey, have these cats around here, man. I'm going to just be real. We all run around here claiming 6 so back in the day, doing all this stuff. Didn't even own uh, uh, a piece of dirt in our grandmother's yard, man. We dying for a neighborhood that we don't own nothing, nothing in, man. bro. I'm from, I'm from the Cooper Road, man. 
I only been home, like I say, a month and 26 days. I think we got five black businesses on the cook room. When I left, the cook room was all black. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the Iranians are, are, are making money off, our, off us. You go in their stores, they got cook room hats, cook room shirts. Mm -hmm. We buying it. Yeah. None of that money is coming back to the cook. Room. None of it. It's, it's, it's draining. It's like back. a vacuum cleaner, literally money, sucking everything and out, and then they emptying it overseas. And you know, they, they end it out on overseas in these other communities. I'm, I'm here now, and uh, they got a neighborhood that they just gave fifty million dollars to to help develop. The cook bro, they won't give us a dollar. No, they were trying to put a project. Yeah. Couple another. Uh, remember when they tried to put the project up there? And I'm it's like, all, all you, like, we gonna we gonna fight it cause, again because you gotta realize you got a lot of Negroes that wear these suits and ties that really ain't for us either. No. These politicians and they, I mean, my whole logic was, you got a lot of houses up here on the Cook Road, man, that can be refurbished, and there's ways I can, I mean, I can, I got a secret, but there's ways you can make people homeowners. Homeowners are more likely to report the crime that's going on in their neighborhood because they don't want their property right, value to go down. Decrease. You see yeah, what I'm right. saying? But you want to throw another apartment complex up there. When you look at the one in front of David Ray, that bitch, it needs to be condemned. Yeah. Then you look, they putting this right around the corner from P Street, and we all know how, you know how shit goes. All you know is it's going to create a wall. Yep. So we got, well, that's something we're going to get together and fight on if they try to bring that back, we man. We got to. And like you said, man, it's about... Man, we need, Cook Road is so big, so underdeveloped. Man, we need some businesses up there. But let me, let me interrupt. Let me show you something. You've been gone for 30 years. When you left, the population in Cook Road was probably 50,000 strong. Do you know we lost almost 30-some 30 30, thousand people, people man? 30-some man, thousand people. I speak about this here to him every day. This is kind of like becoming rhetoric with me. Man, when I left, Street Poke was almost 300,000 Yeah. People. Yeah. Bolger City was 30,000 people. Out of return, Shreveport is under 200,000. Uh, 180-something thousand. Bolger is at over 100,000. Yeah. Bolger, you go in Bolger, you see bulldozers. They study building. Come here, ain't nothing going on. But there's a deliberate plan. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But there's a deliberate... What they're doing, they're choking the, the life out of our community yes. economically. That way people see we can't progress. There's no excuse with Southern University on the on Cooper Road, Road and you got one of the best aerospace technology programs in the country right there on the Cooper Road. Our kid got to go to Dallas yeah, once they graduate from Southern. Yeah. When we can come together as black men and say, well, hey, we know our government like dropping bombs. Let us make some of the parts that, that fly these missiles. Since we, you know what I'm saying? Bring so money. we bring money to, to the economy. hood. Yeah. And then what you do when you're bringing that money? People gonna stay within these in, within these communities. So when people making money, they stand in these communities. That means you get better school system. Yeah. Better education makes better kids. Yeah. We got to look at how things are supposed to go. That's how you raise a civilization to be modernized. That's how you raise the civilization to be progressive. You must have great schools. You must have a, a community where crime is taken away taken away from. You must have uh, jobs. That's how you do it. Build on Southern, like you said. Make Southern be the school it's supposed to be in this state and watch how you see changes. But man, you know, we got to develop things. And we need these fathers to start being fathers and stop being friends to their son. Mm -hmm. Your son, friends are in the streets. You got to be a father yeah. to your son. Yeah. You got to raise your son. And you got to teach your son great decision making. You got to teach him how to think his way out of real, real pressurized situations. When, because peer pressure will lead you to do things that you don't want to do, and then lead you to going in the cell crying when you by yourself. So we, a father can teach his son, and he teaches a father, a real father, teaches son how to think his way out of those situations to make the right decision. So peer pressure, you will never succumb to it. So that's what a father's supposed to do, not. Get these kids drugs to sell, not get these kids guns to go kill other kids, hide these guns from them. A father's doing the right thing by your kid, man, at all times. That's a father. Hey, I always say this. How could you continue to say and call God in heaven your father when you don't even take care of your kid down here 
on earth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, we're going to wrap this video. Hey, bro, you want to say anything, man? Happy birthday, Pops. Uh, uh, hey, you, you, birthday. hey I, again, man, I'm glad y'all you came through and made this video happen, man, this interview. Yeah. Happy birthday, uh, uh, Mr. Murphy. Hey, happy birthday. Hey, what, what, what's happening again? Y'all know YouTube, I mean, Facebook got us uh, blocked on my regular page, but this, this video going out to that page, I see quite a few people have been looking at it. Well, get these numbers up because, again, you just got some real street education. Again, your, your, your clothing brand is street educated. Please. You just got three yeah. brothers from the street who use the education that we learn from the streets and classroom to now realize that, hey, we got a, we got a whole generation that they say is lost. So we got to try to go out there and find them. You want to say anything, one more thing before yes, we wrap man. it up? I would like for y'all to please support uh, the clothing line, Street Educated. Uh, we got shirts. We'll have hats and jeans and stuff real soon, but we got shirts right now. Anybody interested in buying it, you can contact me at 469-799-5741. You can contact Big Row at 318-230-5885. We'll pull up on you. We'll bring you we'll bring your shirts to your home delivery. Uh, the shirts are going for $25 a piece. So please support us. And know that, man, we're trying to do good things and positive things. Also, yeah, also, 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 though, you doing a lot of stuff, man. You're trying to get a lot of stuff going for the kid. There's a lot of people out here, man, with money that can just make a donation yes. to your cash app or something like that. Tell everybody your cash your cash tag, right. man. So, you know, and again, y'all y'all help this brother out, man, because he, he hit the ground running, man, on a positive attitude. You know what I'm saying? It, what what, what could have made him better? made him better and now he's trying to make things better for your baby so if y'all can just drop him a hundred dollars or so man on his cash app to help him with your kids my We're cash app is uh street capital s uh lowercase street the rest of it and capital e d u you know it's cash i go in the front uh we have a uh we're gonna give a hygiene giveaway to the homeless real real soon so any donation would help because we're trying to catch these guys that's hanging out that's homeless, don't have no food or whatever. We want them to be clean, so we want to give them some hygiene. So any donation would help. So thank y'all. Hey, I thank y'all, man, for uh, allowing me the honor and the privilege to do this interview again. It makes me feel good that um, we are... Uh, we are being taken serious here. We already know that because the politicians will tell you we don't be bull driving when it comes to fighting for our people. But it's good to see that our people are watching what we do because, again, we get a lot of hate, but we get more love than the hate. And the hate, guess what? Y'all that hate, I just sit back and drink your tears. Go, go cry in a glass and let me drink your tears because I'm going to keep it real, bro. The real news behind the news, man. And it's time for us. It's time out for us playing, bro. Man, we got a generation that's out here dying, man. And again, you have a brother, man, that was uh, went down this path that a lot of your kids are going down, man. This man did 30 years, came out, and hit the ground, and is now trying to change, you know, wipe out all the, the negative that he's done, you know, by bringing some positivity to our community and our, our neighborhood and our city. So, hey, y'all, hit his cash tag again. It's uh, cash tag. Street EDU, or you say capital S Street, Street, mm -hmm. and then it's capital EDU. I mean EDU. Yes. All right, well we will we'll we'll go back and edit this video. But hey y'all, this your boy Rob Thomas Jr. Um, thank y'all for watching. Please share this video, man. And it's a lot of y'all that got um youth organizations, you can use this video. You give them permission to use yes. this video yes, 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 yes. to uh, talk to the kids. And like I say, this is somebody who, if anybody got a message. This man here do. So again, one more time, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, see y'all see us on another video. Oh, is it gonna be cool for us to put this on YouTube also? Yes, yes, All right, yeah, we get a lot more loot views too on YouTube. So yeah. Hey, this your boy Rod Thomas Jr. saying y'all be blessed. Thank you.